everyone, my name is Morgan White and welcome to my home studio. Today I will be giving you some background information as well as a quick demo on the Japanese lithography type, Mokulito. So the first things that you'll need are your wood blocks. You can get these at any hardware store. All you need is some plywood. But I would think about what type of wood that you select because this is birch and I choose birch because I enjoy these beautiful grain lines that you can either have vertical or horizontal. And you will need to sand these, but not too intensely. Um, this all depends on how much grain you want to show up in your prints. I've just used a hand sand block and you can also use sheets of sandpaper that works for the corners very really, really well or an electric one. Some of the materials that you can use are any acrylic paint. It doesn't really matter what color it is because whatever printing ink you use will be what shows up in your print. As well as Arabic gum, a sponge, you can use any type of waterproof or oil-based crayons, markers, or pencils. So Mokulito, or lithography on wood, literally translated, Moku being wood, and Vito being shortened for lithography, is a type of printmaking based on the principles of lithography using uh, wood as a matrix instead of stone or metal. It was developed by Seiji Ozaku in Japan during the 70s and is considered a newer twist on a very traditional art form. So you've probably noticed that there are two ways to spell it, Mokulito with an L and, a, and Mokulito with an R. So this is just due to the phonetics of English and Japanese, so the West has adapted Mokulito because the Japanese language, they do not have an L so the sound is more consistent with an R and an L combined. So translated, it's an R. After your sketch is done, and let's say that there's a part of it that you don't like, ink cannot be removed from wood very easily, but it can be covered. So I've actually found that masking fluid can, on occasion, be able to completely remove the area that you did not want on your plate or at least lessen the effects of it. So as you can see here, I decided that I didn't want his badge anymore. So I covered it up and hopefully it either prints as this being a light gray area or nothing at all. So something that should be noted is that you can get about 15 good prints from a Mokulito block that's been properly prepared. So as you can see, I've used both of these older blocks quite a few times, and in between printing, I would suggest taking a damp sponge, much like this one, um, and just brushing over and getting away the excess oil, um, ink in between printing. Uh, each time that you print, it will become darker, but that's one of the reasons why you can get many interesting prints. They're all going to be a little bit different, even though it is the same image. You need to Arabic gum the slab. So what you're gonna do is take your Arabic gum. I just have these individual bottles. They sell them at any art store. But if you would like, you can buy them off of Amazon or any, any place online that sells Arabic gum powder and you can mix it yourself. So it's a 50-50 solution and you use hot water to mix it up and you can keep it in like a tin or some kind of plastic bin that has a sealant on it. So you're going to give it a good coating. You don't want it too thin or else it won't print. And it'll quickly degrade your plate. But you also don't want it too thick, or else it's gonna be too gummy. Okay. 
you want to be able to coat all the edges as well as the entire top. If you want to reuse your block, you have to clean it and then go through the process of gumming it again. And this is after you've printed a couple of times. But again, you can get about 15 good prints before you have to go through that process. This is one of my plates that I have regummed. I made the mistake of not waiting the full 24 hours for the Arabic to dry the first time. So you can see the background. I've lost a bit of it. You can go back over before you re-gum your slate to try and reestablish some details, but this is one of the reasons why you need to let yourself have enough time. Mokolito is a process and can't always be rushed. You can experiment with how much time you can push it, how close to 24 hours or sooner, but I would say to be safe and do 24 hour mark or more. Okay, so we have changed locations and we are in the UMSL lithography department. And what we have here is our tile slab. You can use any surface as long as it is not wood, preferably um, stone. And we have a baking sheet here. Uh, it is the sticky kind, and that will help keep our plate in position while we ink it. So what you'll need is lithography ink, as well as two basins one filled with water and a sponge and an empty one for you to put your access dirty water in. And then we have isopar for cleanup and we have our spatula and our scraping as well as one of these rollers. You can use a brayer, but for Mokolito, I would suggest using a paint roller, a small one because you can get um, more ink in the grooves and more detail and compared with the brayer. And I also suggest having either old cut up t-shirts that you know you can use for your hands as well as clean up. The lithog lithography ink some of this can be a little dry, if not stored properly. So this one, somebody has not stored it well, but we are going to use the bottom part of this, open it up. Okay. So you're gonna take your ink put it on your slab and you want to spread it so it's smooth. And usually I'll spread it to about the width of my, my roller. And you don't need too much, but enough to be able to pick up the right about it. So, After that is done, we are going to dip our roller in water. It shouldn't be soaking, it just needs to be a little bit damp so it can pick up the ink. And you kind of want to move quickly with this because the ink can dry very fast. 
And this is an old plate, so I've inked this already a couple times, so it won't be as clean as if it was a new one. So usually newer ones, whenever you roll it over, it's going to pick up the ink in negative spots and keep the ink forever. We have laid your material before. So now that we've prepped our wood block, we need to prep the paper. So I have a basin here and I've pre-filled it with room temperature water. You can use cold water or room temperature. I would advise against using hot water because this may damage certain types of paper. So once you have your paper submerged in the water, slightly push it under so it breaks the, the tension surface. We're gonna have it sit there for a couple seconds. Take it out and have a towel ready. But I like to have a second folded one. Just lay it on and press it out. Now you don't want your paper to be too wet because your print will become runny and you don't want it to dry or else it won't transfer. Okay, so we're at the printing press and what you want to do is make sure that both of these are at a either even pressure or a pressure that is going to allow for the print to be even. So, we have inked our plate and soaked our paper and then dried it. So it should be damp, not too wet, not too dry. This can actually very much affect how the print comes out. But what you're gonna do is put a folded sheet of newsprint on the first layer and line it up. You should have measurements both horizontally and vertically. Piece of soaked paper. After we line it up, and you can choose a placement where you would like your palette to go. And you can either have an even amount of spacing from the top to the bottom, or it is also very common in prints to do a larger space at the tail end. Once we have that all set, we're gonna put another piece of folded newsprint paper on top. And the reason why I'm using newsprint paper is that you wanna protect your print from getting any excess spots from either the wool that we're going to be using on top of this stack. You can probably see these leftovers from other prints. We just wanna make sure we have the clean edges and your actual image is not interrupted by something else. So once that's done, we're gonna pull it through. And I usually like to do forward and back and then one more time over. And you can feel where the plate is. Okay, so after we're done inking our plate, we need to clean this up. Um, you don't have to clean it up right away. It depends on how many prints you're making, but just so you know, um, every time you print, you do need to re-roll your plate. So we're gonna take some isopar and spritz that on our little ink blot. And I sometimes like to pull it through with a spatula just so we kind of get the thick ink that we did not pick up loose. And this is where your t-shirt is going to come in handy. Also, just a side note, the ink will get everywhere. It's, it sticks to any surface on your hands, 
So if you like to wear gloves, that is suggested. If not, um, wear clothes that you don't care about. And this is where we're gonna take our t-shirt. Swipe it up. And you'll do a similar method whenever you clean your brayer or roller as well as spatula, anything that has this ink on it.